I am so thrilled to be here, one, because I've always wanted to come to Hobart and William Smith. Uh, and ever since he came here as president, I've wanted to come that much more. I wanted to come because my boss inaugurated this lecture series. And um, I wanted to come because it's so close to a very special shrine for women's rights, not just for the United States, but a symbol for the world, Seneca Falls, because our world is so extremely interconnected. And you know this better than I, because your generation is so on top of all of this. Now, a blog that you post in Geneva, New York, is just about at the same time in Geneva, Switzerland. Facebook has become such a vast social network encircling the globe via the internet and sparking even democracy movements in places like Tunisia and Egypt and beyond. We are more and more interdependent. And with globalization and economic integration, we have seen how a financial breakdown in one place can create many serious ripples all around the world. Today, in the most remote villages, and I've seen it with my own eyes, cell phones are being used to bank for the first time the poorest people, to give them access to a savings account or to get credit. It's being used to teach literacy for economic empowerment, particularly for women, and to protect them from violence. And at the same time, infectious diseases in one place can travel very, very quickly and infect countless more across the world as quickly as a plane ride. So your world is one that is all about what you do here and what this institution has been so committed to, being a strong place for internationalism. But while technology and globalization have brought the world closer together, our world still confronts staggering global challenges from climate change to violent extremism and so much more. We know that no country, no country can get ahead if it leaves half of its people behind. Yet the potential of women and girls is still largely untapped, and our world is being shortchanged of the talent it sorely needs. Humanity, I believe, has no greater underutilized resource than its women and girls. Recognizing that in the world that we are all part of today, that we cannot begin to solve the global challenges that we confront, whether they have to do with the environment, or governance, or economics, or security, or so much more, unless women are participating at all levels of society. So we are integrating women's issues throughout the work that we do in the State Department and in our development programs around the world not for ideological reasons, not because somebody says this is a good thing to do, because for 21st century foreign policy and diplomacy, it is what we need to be doing. We need to ensure that our world can inherit the benefits of what women and girls represent. We know, for example, and Larry Summers, a name that I'm sure uh, is, uh, is uh, known to many of you. When he was a young economist at the World Bank, he published a study that has stood the test of time that shows that when it comes to development, the single most effective investment that can be made is to educate a girl. Because when you educate a girl, you educate a family, a community. So we are shortchanging not just women, but we're shortchanging our world. 
Now, neither in our country or in any part of the world, not in today's world, certainly, can we afford to promote policies that do not take advantage of what this represents. Women had few rights in the United States in those days, and Charlotte wanted to improve her life. And she said that when she started out on that day to go to the Women's Rights Convention, she was filled with trepidation. She got into her horse-drawn wagon, and she worried that she'd be the only one on the road. And it was dark because the sun hadn't come up yet, and she didn't see anybody else. But she said when she came to a crossroads, she saw more wagons and carriages, and more and more people, men and women. And they were forming one long procession on the road to equality. So what the future holds in Tunisia or Egypt, none of us here tonight can say. It will depend a great deal on how the women are included in the decisions going forward to ensure whether or not they will have an equal place in society. So all around the world, there are not so ordinary people, women doing rather extraordinary things. And what happens to women and girls around the world will say a great deal about what kind of world we will all have. So remember that road that Charlotte Woodard was on over 160 years ago, traveling to the Women's Rights Convention. We're still on that road. Women and girls from every continent and the good men who walk with them. I hope that each and every one of you will walk the extra mile to make a difference, to create a better world for them wherever they live. This is not just the right thing to do. It is the smart thing to do. Because the rising of the women is the rising of us all. Thank you very much. <laughs>